you assess the first two games? I think our performances were very good. Um, you know, I think when you have a new team and you're, you're you know, you're, we've been training very hard since the 6th of January and, you know, we've a lot of last year's the lads who were with us for the last couple of years, guys coming through and then bringing all the new players in. It takes a bit of time to gel. I suppose the big concern, particularly going in against Pats, was you were playing a team who were very settled, very, you know, they've been there before and uh, they've won the league and they're, they're strong. But I'd have to say that, you know, last Friday night was a fantastic performance. Um, you know, the hard work, the attitude was spot on. But I think the passion is there. And I think what we've sensed in training over, over, over the early part of pre-season that there's a real honest bunch of guys really wanting to do well for the club. And we've, we've seen that. And while last Friday night was... You know, in itself looked after itself because everyone knew first game of the season, they knew the crowd was going to be big and you know, no matter who you are, it's easy to get up for a game if you walk out before five five and a half thousand people. But Monday night to me was nearly better because, you know, sometimes after the hype and the huge crowd and, and expectation for Friday night, you could have a slump of a performance. And if anything, Monday night was you know, an absolutely fantastic performance because, again, the, the intensity of the match, the, the, the tempo was fantastic. And, um, you know, I really think on Monday night that we had 13 chances. And we had probably, we scored four times. We definitely, out of 13 chances, we definitely had four unbelievable chances between great saves and hitting the crossbar. So when you look at it, and goals are slow, when you look at it that way, I just think that... Um, you know, it really showed that even though we did make some changes, the guys that came in as well, the work they work ethic was was fantastic. And I suppose, look, at that's what we're really trying to get into our game. And if we can bring that, you know, every week into our game, I think then the club will definitely, over the next season, two seasons, will become a very, a very strong team. You know, so um, looking back on it, I think, you know, it was a great start to the season. There were two very good performances. I suppose they're out of the way. And now we go to probably... One of the toughest venues in Derry at the weekend, where you know a new manager, they're a new team, and you saw against Rovers, they were very direct, they were very physical, and um, they had all the strong attributes for th- that the, that a good league of Ireland team needs. So it's a huge challenge for us. But you know, I can have no complaints with the way the last two games have gone. After Monday, you gave Anthony a 50-50 chance of anything else on update. Yeah, it's probably. I'd have to say after this morning's training is touch and go, he still hasn't trained. I suppose the fact that he's worked so hard in pre-season and his fitness levels are high, we're leaving him till the last minute. But it's 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 very it's very, very tight but at the moment. The, he got physio again this morning, he's out of training, but he still hasn't trained. We're hoping in the morning that he might be able to uh, go for a run, but at the moment he still hasn't even 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 been able to jog. So if, a, if the game was next Tuesday, I'd say he's available. Sunday's very tight. And I suppose what we need to look at and what the physio is looking at is a situation that if there's any doubt, do you risk him in your second league game of the season for the sake of three or four days or not? So it's um, it's a tight one. No, I suppose the plus side to it is that Mark O'Sullivan did very well the other night. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a great young fella, fantastic attitude and uh, works so hard. And then you, young Leanne came in and got two goals. So it just shows you at least, you know, while we've had injuries in the forward area, at least probably we've had two lads that have come in out of the blue and done really well. So, um, you know, that's that, that's the plus side of it. But Anthony will be is still very t- is touch and go like. Rafter and Danny Morrissey obviously still out for the weekend. Both out the weekend. The good news is Michael will be back training next week. Um, I suppose to be fair to the guy, he's chomping at the bit because the physio has been a bit careful with him. Michael is telling the physio that he's okay, but he's not yet. But to be fair, I can understand why because he can see, you know, from the two performances that he was in the team in pre season, he was buzzing, and all of a sudden he's sitting back and he's after seeing two fantastic performances and he's probably saying, I don't want to be out for much longer, I want to get myself back in there. You know, so it's just good. And Danny is um, a little bit further away. But we've had a bit of positive news this week that he's he's um they, there's there's no more um he saw a specialist on Tuesday and um 
he got the okay that everything was healing well. So he's still definitely probably three to four weeks away, but at least it looks now as if we, we, we can see a, day, a date that he's going to be back training. Johnny, you have a bit of a, a, bit of a headache at left back for Sunday, but yeah. the lady's suspended and Danny's part yeah. of the company. Yeah. Is yeah. it kind of a naturally left footed player kind of thing? Or? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, um, yeah, I suppose it was it was part of the reason why at the start of the season we brought Kevin Mulcahy in as well, you know, because um, um, at the time we weren't sure if, if Danny would be signing. And um, so from that point of view, but Kevin then got a, a knock with his hip on, on the all-weather up in Galway in the pre-season, which knocked him out for two weeks training afterwards. He fell awkwardly, which is a bit of a, a drawback to him. And as a result, he lost game time, which he needed. Um, but still, at the same time, we have John Kavanagh, we have we have Neil Horgan, and um, we're looking at one or two other options. But um, is Hoggy Travan is is available? Hoggy's available. Kavanagh is available, and um, Kevin Muller is available. I suppose it, it's 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 a situation where uh, I suppose John Kavanagh is probably headed the other two lads for 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 the call. But at the same time, um, he got a knock. Last he was supposed to start Monday night against against Wexford, and so I had Sunday morning training. He got a knock at training, had to limp out. So he should have played Monday night, and he didn't. So you know, it's 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 uh, it's um, and to be fair to the guy, it's not that they're soft. It's just the way it's gone, you know. But um, so yeah, it's it's um, I'm hoping not to make a, make too many position changes for 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 the one position. Generally, I like to do one for one rather than changing three or four positions. So um. You know, it's um we're we're back in tomorrow now again and, and uh we're, we're gonna have a closer look at it. It must be a shame to lose a player with Danny's experience. Yeah. Um really, yeah, it, it's it, it, it's very hard for, for me or, or the club at the moment to, to to comment on the situation and we can't really, but um look at everyone knows he was a fantastic servant of the club. He won league medals with the club, he won league medals with Rovers, F- fantastic, fantastic player and um I suppose look at when he was with City over the years between the FAI Cup and the League Championship and the Santa Cup, he was um like he had a left back position his own for eight or ten years, which was a credit to the guy. Do you know what I mean? And and I suppose a fantastic reader of the game, tough tackler, tremendous pace, great ball to knock not a great fella to knock in the ball. And um just just I I suppose a super player and it's just unfortunate that um that um he won't be with us anymore. You um, must be sorry Dennis, you must be really pleased with the the man in the other full back position because He's a complete surprise to us. I think I was told as a midfielder, uh, yeah. Brian Lenham, but he's excelled in the two, ge- two or three games that I've seen him at right back. Yeah, and to be fair to him, he has been fantastic. And as I said last week, he's had injuries for the last couple of years. No one has seen a lot of him. And I suppose when you look at the midfield area with us, when you look at the likes of um, Colin Healy, Garrod, Gary Buckley, David O'Leary, Darren Murphy, we have lots of options. And to be fair to, to Brian coming in without having played in the last two years, really, you know, it was one of those ones that he was battling with the lads and he had played a couple of times in training at full back and we'd looked at him in a couple of matches and he'd done really well. And to be fair to him, I think his natural position will be in the middle of the park, yes, but he's still only young. And I think being in the first team will give, you know, he's getting the confidence that he needs. And if he can, if he can build on that, which I'm sure he can, not only is he a tremendous right back, I think he will progress into being a really top centre midfield pair yet. But uh, but at the moment, like I suppose we have huge options in that in that area, and he's done a fantastic job for us at full back. It must be easier from a logistics point of view to be travelling to Derry for a Sunday game than for a Friday night one, is it? Yes, and I suppose it, two things: one in the week that's in it because we've had uh, we've had um, the Limerick match Monday night, so the turnaround if the game had been Friday would have been a lot tighter the fact it's gone to Sunday gives us two extra days and even even as you know yourself rather than travelling back from Derry in the middle of the night arriving home at five or six in the morning yeah. it's normal time and you're going to be back in Cork hopefully probably 11 o'clock Sunday night so it's it's normal sleeping patterns and it, it certainly from that point of view has, has, has worked out better for us you travel up Saturday afternoon is it? Saturday yeah Saturday lunchtime and like, do you change your approach when you're away to a big team now like do you try and set your start up to you know, in the view that a point is a good result, or do you just 
play normally. Well, to, well, to be honest, I think you know. I think if you look at last week's match, at the end of the at the end of the game, a point probably when you look back, say was it a good result? A point probably was under circumstances of Johnny didn't Johnny getting sent off. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you, half time, we were we were quite positive that we were going to win the match. We felt there was going to be more chances there for us. So, we you know it's it, it's not in my nature, and and it's gone to the stage where. You, you go out and you, you sit back and you be cautious. Um, maybe you always like to sit alone the first 10 or 15 minutes, but certainly um, going to Derry, you know, it's a huge challenge from us at the end of the 90 minutes. You know, if he came away with a draw, it might be a good result. Then again, it might, it might not. But I certainly, we're, we're certainly, there's no talk about going up, sitting back, playing for a draw. You know, yeah. we, don't, we don't do that. You know what I mean? Because we feel that in, in the league, anyone can beat each other. And um, I suppose my own opinion is that if you go up to teams and you start sitting back and sitting back, you're going to invite pressure. And if you keep inviting pressure, then something something's going to give. You know what I mean? So, so um, you know, we're, 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 after the week we're having, we're going to be positive. We know it's very difficult. We know that obviously Derry's first home game, you know, it's going to be tough. Roddy, Roddy's a, a super manager. You know, Derry's a super club. They're a bit like ourselves in lots of ways. That's yeah. why there's so, so many good connections between the club. And uh, they're going to come out and have a right go off us, but still at the same time, look at we're not being negative, we're very positive, and we feel that you know that at the same at the end of the day we have to go and get a result as well. Who will be your captain? Well, the assistant captain is is Darren Murphy, oh. <laughs> and um, I suppose it really will depend whether Darren will be on the team or not. Um, if he's if. Um, if not, we'll appoint someone for the day today, and probably on the day we'll probably, um, if that's the case, um, we'll probably appoint Colin Healy. Oh, okay. What do you make of Derry's performance against Shimmer Groves? I thought we were, you know, I suppose when you look at Derry, Derry have an awful lot of, a bit like ourselves, a lot of young Derry lads coming through, and if you look over over the last number of years, they've brought some superb top quality guys coming through, McNamee, McElhenney, all these lads, Derry had been with them, you know what I mean? They're very strong, and but they're very flamboyant side. But looking at them on Sunday, Roddy's brought a different element to them now this year, and he's brought them, we'll say, very direct, very physically strong, and a very physical big side. You know, if you look at their two centre backs were were over six foot two, six foot three. The left back is is over six foot, middle of the park Malloy, Ventry, Shane McElhenney, six foot four. Um, current up front six foot odd and the lad in the wing steward so they were about seven fellas they were over six foot so they were a big strong side and you could see at three kicks and corners they were very very dangerous and um, they were very direct very much in your face so um, he's changed our style a bit but at the same time you know when you know there's still Patterson to come in they still had uh, uh, McLean to come in the other brother Patrick so they still had a couple of flair fellas who were still to come in so um you know, in fairness, in a short space of time, he's built a very strong team, and uh, they seem to be, you know, physical and very direct. And I suppose the one noticeable thing about it was that uh, on Sunday's performance, you looked at, it was like a, you know, it was tough League of Ireland. The, the start of the game was slow, but Derry I thought played very well. But there was honest to God challenges going in, and you know, in fairness, the referee he was he was waving them and letting them play on. It was, you know. You know, I think it was quite noticeable how there was very few cards in the match Sunday compared to the cards that were in our match on Friday night. So, you know, so hopefully Sunday, and particularly with the game on TV, hopefully that um, the game will be let, let, left just run. I know you can't talk about referees, but if you read and heard about the match on Friday night, like eight yellows and one red, and there was hardly a dirty tattle in the game. Well, it was extraordinary. Well, I think what the, I think what the most extraordinary thing about it is. And there has been a spin put on it that, you know, the cock were physical. I think the most uh, ironic thing when you look at it is that the physio from St. Pat's never came onto the pitch for any one of our yellow cards, which I think answers the question, you know. But at the same time, to be fair to Pat's, they, they've won a league. They've super players. They're very experienced. And, you know, I suppose to be fair, a lot of the challenges, they anticipated. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is, you know, if someone reads the paper and sees that there's that many other cars, they must say, God, cock to this, cock to that. The fact that our physio never came onto the pitch, in my opinion, tells its own story, you know. And um, and I think, you know, when you when you look back and we looked at it on video, it does seem some of the challenges, 
you know, you do see looking at at the video that they sense some of the challenges coming, and you know, I think in hindsight maybe if the game was viewed again, maybe some of the cards might have been might have been cards, and and there was certainly probably within the first six minutes two challenges, um, that probably would have been yellow cards for Pat's players, you know, if it had been later in the match. I don't know, but uh, certainly the first one after after the first minute. After, there was one after twenty five seconds. <coughs> and he did, he did, should have been yes, yeah, you know. So so look at uh, look at I suppose look at I, I look. I don't really want to get on trying to stick to the positives. Yes. I don't want to get into that that that, that situation or making anything. But I do think that it is it is a you know a, the, the the crucial thing is the Pat's physio was never on, never came onto the pitch for any of the, the incidents, which I think tells its own. Yeah, but it, it it's something like with the players like Colin Healy in the league. Fatty and McPhail returning the standard coming up, like the you will have to look at that the refereeing standards will have to rise as well. Well, it's my it's it, it's my first. Just I'm just new in the job. I've watched a lot of matches. I would think that you know the majority of referees are good and they're decent. The problem is they're being assessed so so critically now. You know they're under pressure as well. But look at as I keep saying is that you know European football, you know in countries. In a lot of countries, there's no such thing as tackling anymore. Certainly, we don't want to get to a stage over here where you can't have an honest to God tackle because it's part of our culture, it's part of our game, and plus the fact it's part of our, you know, I suppose our our our, our, our supporters coming to the matches. They like to see teams having a go off each other, and I think what the, the difference is, you can't have a situation where some weeks there's certain referees are letting guys go and have an honest to God challenge. And another week you're having guys who are just pulling out yellow cards. And I suppose that's where the consistency needs to come, you know. And 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 I, and I suppose it, it's a situation where that, you know, at the end of, at the end of the day, you were at the match last Friday night. There was a few yellow cards deserved, maybe for late challenges, but there was nothing malicious in the whole game. And in fairness to Pat's day, a few yellow cards, really the same the same thing. But I think it was a good, honest to God, League of Ireland game. Nothing malicious, and um, but there probably was too many cards at the end of the day. As a midfielder girl, how do you feel about it? Like, do you kind of find yourself having to kind of calm down a bit on what's going to tackles, or like, do would you not change your approach? Like, no, I wouldn't change my approach at all. Like mentally, I'd be still going for the ball. You know, every time, like even if I did foul him or whatever, hundred percent, I'd be going for the ball. Like you know, so I wouldn't change my approach at all. No. This is your fourth year in the the club, is it? Fourth year, yeah. So, like, have you found yourself in that time? Developing into one of the leaders in the team, kind of almost like, you know, like as, as with, with someone like Danny you now moving on, like, you know, there's just one less experienced player there. So, do you find yourself having to kind of step it up a bit? Yeah, well, in a way, I suppose I would be like for, there's a, we'd be young enough squad, you know, we have a good mix, but so I'd be kind of in the middle, you know, there's, there's a, there'd be less experienced players below me there, and there'd be players like Colin Healy and things like that above me, you know, so. I I'm I'm getting there, like you know. And like, are you finding yourself like are you fully adjusted now to playing Premier Division football? Like you're not overawed by it or anything like that. Like this is your your third year playing it. Yeah, no, it does take. There isn't a adjustment period to it, but um, yeah, I think I'm there now, and I think the way John has his playing as well, I think um, it'll board well for us. And would you class yourself as a defensive or an attacking player or kind of an all rounder? Well, I suppose it depends what the manager would want me to do on the day, you know, but, yeah, I could do both, like, I'd rather rather be attacking, you know, it's more fun, I suppose. And do you think there's any part of your game that you need to improve on at the moment, or...? Uh, yeah, of course, there's always areas you need to improve on, you know, just because you need to, you're never going to perfect it, so you're always trying to get better at a certain area, you know, so I just keep working every day with the manager and John Cotter as well, and... See how we go. And it's probably a huge help playing alongside someone like Colin there in the middle. Ah, uh, yeah, always. Healer's brilliant, like the experience he brings. Just, I said it last season when he signed, he said if Healer's didn't kick a ball all season, just to have him there, the stuff he passes on, Chaz, it's priceless, like, you know. Do you want to improve your kind of goals ratio as well, presumably? Yeah, I'm saying that last two seasons, no, last season wasn't so great. <laughs> Only got two in the season, but um, definitely this season, I don't see why not, like, but John. The way the team are playing around our John's. Manager, yeah, that's to yeah, that's his job. John wants me to score more goals, and to be fair, that's why I think I need to add that to my game. And the way John has his playing at the moment, I think there's no reason why I shouldn't.
there's a great rapport between Cork and Derry and they'll obviously be City fans travelling on Sunday. Does that make a huge difference to you on the pitch? To have you, your own little, even if they're a small band of... Definitely, both? yeah, always. Like, um, just to have that support there, I think, does, does wonders on the pitch. You know, it gives you a, there's a bit of confidence when you scored in or whatever they, they kind of G up, you know, and you're kind of doing it for them in a way, you know, because so they're after making the, the effort to travel, like... Okay, just say one fight. We can say one one other final thing, lads. Just while you're on there about Carol and, the, and tackling, I actually think we're probably the cleanest side out there. You know, I'm watching the guys every day training, and they they um, we have a fantastic bunch of guys who train as hard as they can every day. But we're actually an exceptionally clean team. Though it's ironic that Johnny got sent off last last week for two yellow cards and whatever. And I don't want to harp on it, but at the same time, I'm looking at the lads out there. There's no nastiness in our team. If anything, it's probably an area that we probably do. We probably, if we could bring back, if we could bring bring back a John Cotter, maybe or Liam Murphy, it might, it might, it might be good. You know what I mean? But we actually don't have it. You know, which is a credit to the guys. But so, you know, while some people have said some things after last Friday night, it's absolutely the exact opposite because we, what we have is a real, honest to God, hard working team who at all times are just trying to win and win the ball. And that's exactly what they are. And I think that that's, that's what the big thing about last fight. It stood back when you looked at it after, after the game. We didn't have... I know Billy was late for one challenge. We were going for the ball. But we're not a team that goes out. And I'm certainly not a guy because we don't want to have yellow cards. No. We, won't, we don't want to have a fella sent off. Malice. There's no malice. No malice. No.